the second generation star, of course, uh, Stan the Man Stasiak. And um, were you? I was actually, I'm going to further on draw parallels with The Rock as well because you're second. He's obviously third generation, but you know, Dad's a wrestler. Were you uh, sure. sort of an army brat uh, style? You know, moving from territory to territory with your father, or were you in one fixed location while he went and plied his trade? Oh no, no, we. I I was yanked in and out of school districts my whole life. I was always an outsider. Uh, you know, always, uh, I, in fact, I was a victim of bullying. And uh, because, of course, back in those days in the 70s and early 80s, you know, the, the cat wasn't out of the bag quite yet as far as pro wrestling. And people believed, you know, what they saw on TV is to be, you know, all the way real, the storylines, the characters, everything. So they didn't look at it as it's an act, it's, char- you know, characters being played or portrayed. My dad was a, a heel in a lot of the time. So right here in Dallas, Texas, I remember being chased uh home from school because uh, my dad a bad guy a heel would uh you know feud with the the von erics who were like gods around here right so i grew up uh and was exposed at a very early age uh traveling up you know up and down the highways and byways of of life and the us and uh in canada and um yeah i was i experienced uh the territory day so we traveled uh, many many times in fact i went to three or four different high schools my no three different high schools my first year so that just to kind of give you an idea of how much we moved around and uh, portland oregon uh, pacific northwest don owens territory uh there were different territory you know dallas was the von erics you had the, the Ganyas up in Minnesota. Uh, of course, the McMahons were the, the northeast part of the states. You had uh, Crockett promotions. You had Don Owens, like I said, in the Pacific Northwest. You had Roy Shires, uh, I believe, was in um, in San Francisco. So I, I traveled everywhere um, because of that, because being exposed to the business at such an early age, traveling with my father. Mm. Um, tell me your favorite territory to just live in. <sighs> Probably Portland, just because, really? uh, just have, uh, you know, I, I've got bitter sweets with Portland because I lost both my parents there and there were some hardships that I experienced there. But um, I have a lot of great memories there. Uh, also, Toronto, Canada, the Toronto area. Uh, I've got buddies of mine to this very day that are like my family. So uh, I say, you know, Pacific Northwest and, and Toronto for sure. Um, obviously, I've got to ask this. Uh, Stan the Man Stasiak, former WWF champion. And, you know, he, he was a, a big draw, as far as I can tell, in many different places. Yet his name never seems to come up when you talk about, you know, the old guys in the territories and stuff like that. And it seems a bit of a shame to me because, you know, he obviously did draw money and he had a lot of success in the business and as a former champion. Uh, with the WWF champion... He must have told you the story about when he was going to find out he was uh, defeating Pedro Morales. You know, it's funny about that, James. I never knew the real story until after my dad had passed and I had heard the tape that um, Bill After had recorded my dad, I believe, the night that he won it and or explained that, you know what, that was something different. I'm confusing that with something else. Uh, There was a dialogue showing my dad's dialogue and the agent going over what was going to happen that night because my dad had wrestled pedro many times and it all you know the end result was that pedro would hold on to the title and it showed a dialogue there and i'd never seen that before i thought that was so interesting that my dad had no idea you know going to the arena that night had no idea that he you know they were going to put the strap on him and he become the fifth wrestler in the history of the wwe become champion so um, I never learned about, I've learned a lot about my dad after he had passed and I went to WWE and would, uh, you know, converse with Pat Patterson, Jack Lanza, these guys were agents for WWE and they would share all kinds of stories about my father. My, my dad was, uh, everyone loved him, you know, he was a man's man. The boys would argue over him of who he was going to travel with to go to the next town because they knew that if Stan Stasiak was in the car, the trip would go so much smoother because you'd have him laughing the whole way. My dad was a jokester, great storyteller. Uh, you would have loved my dad. He was just, everyone loved him. <laughs> Great sideburns as well. Uh, <laughs> and Neil Diamond, I, get, I think, and give him a run. But I will say, my dad did have a mean streak, and um, he was a tough cookie. And, you know, he wasn't like a body guy. He liked to drink his beer, and he liked to, he liked to brawl. And um, <laughs> he, um, he, he would get his shirt off his back to anyone he loved, but he also didn't want to cross him the wrong way either. <laughs> um, he was... And I'm sure, unbeknownst to most people watching this, uh, in the Hall of Fame, but as a legacy candidate, uh, I'm sure, obviously, I'm talking to the best biased person in the world, of course, but, I mean, he 
for all his accomplishments, I don't really think he should have been lumped in with so many others in just like a small video package. Were you uh, consulted uh, for him to uh, go into the Hall of Fame? That's a very, very bitter topic for me. Oh, right. And I try to be one who, you know, I don't, I'm not one to try to be, I'm all, I'm actually a speaker, you know, and I'm, I don't just want to blow smoke up, you know, wherever, just to say whatever to make people. I, I like to be real and, and have pertinence and substance to, to my insights and, and, and when I'm connecting with people on a, a speaking standpoint. But um, this is one of those things that it was just, it was just very, very uh, wrong the way that it was, uh, they did this. And look, first of all, I, I'm grateful and um, it's an honor to acknowledge him for what he had accomplished or what he was a part of in that era. Uh, you know, this is during a time that, you know, the belt didn't change a whole lot. Uh, if you held the WWF championship, which is today the same, you know, same company, the WWE championship, you know, it, it really meant something because it was very far and few between that belt would, would change hands. So there was a, there was quite a few good heels that they could have chosen from to make the transition from Pedro to get the belt onto Bruno, uh, my dad being, and they're both baby faces. They didn't want them to, to match up. So they needed a good heel to make the trans. My dad was considered a transitional champion. He only held the, the belt for nine days. But uh, as the story goes, he says, Sean, those were the happiest nine days of my life. Apart from, you know, me being born, he would always say that. Um, and back in that day, you know, it just, it, it meant a lot to him because it, again, they, they could have gone with a lot of other heels, but they chose my dad because he had such great heat. And as you know, a heels booze in the arena is like the baby faces roaring cheers. Right. And um, so anyway, you know, fast forward years later, I, I had my, my experience with pro wrestling and. Uh, you know, I got out of the business back in, uh, when was it, 2002, pursued my chiropractic career. Uh, I've been serving my community here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for the past, you know, 15 plus years and developed a speaking career along the way, which I'm, I'm going to the next level with. Uh, and I, you know, I even I dabble with, um, and not to go down a rabbit hole, but I'm, I'm going to get back, circle back to your, to answer your question. I'm just giving you a, a picture of how this all kind of came about and how this affected me. Um, you know, I, I, I do also dabble in some of the, uh, entertainment projects that I have going on with my alter ego character phobia, and you can check that out at the outdated website, which is going to be updated very soon. That's F O B I A TV.com. But, um, season pro the, there, season pro. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, so I've got some big visions with that and we can get into that maybe a little bit more down the road, but, um, long story short, <laughs> this is already a long story is I had anticipated, you know, being out of the business as long as I have. Um, I felt that, you know, what I've done since I've been out of the business has been nothing but positive and giving back to my community and developing a speaking career and trying to, you know, I help people with my, my hands and, and help change lives for a, in a better way, uh, both physically, mentally, spiritually, uh, with the type of work and space that I'm involved with and have been for the past, you know, since I've been out of wrestling. And um, I campaigned and, and promoted my father every year, you know, a couple months prior to WrestleMania because of the big Hall of Fame ceremony before the big show, um, you know, and I also promoted the, the pitch, the idea that, you know, there's never been a father-son duo to ever hold the WB title ever in history. And still to this very day, it hasn't been done. So I thought that, you know, I've, I, I feel like I, you know, I'm staying in the best shape I can as I get older and trying to keep, you know, with the chiropractic lifestyle, healthier lifestyle that I lead. And, you know, I feel, I feel like my shelf life has been extended a little bit and, and keeping some integrity there. And I thought, you just never know. Uh, I'm certainly not waiting by my phone, you know, to ring the, but I'm always open for the right business. And, you know, uh, I just thought though, you know, I'm open to the right business, but again, it has to be the right business. Uh, it makes sense creatively and on a business standpoint to, to ever even consider going back to that in any way. Uh, but I still promoted my father getting inducted in the Hall of Fame. I felt that he was worthy of that. Even though he held the belt for only nine days, he still was an original pioneer of that industry uh, in that company, you know, the earlier stages. And I always felt that when the time would come, when it was time, I, I had faith that eventually he would be, um, you know, granted that, you know, that, that acknowledgement, um, they would call upon me, his only son, 
that I know of anyway, uh, his only son to take the honor and, you know, share a couple stories. Um, thank you. Good night. <laughs> Never happened. Um, I noticed that a few years, you know, the past five, six years before they did, did what they did, um, they would show this legacy wing, or maybe it was a couple years. It was a couple years anyway, where they show this legacy wing. And I was like, I get nervous. I go, oh man, don't tell me they would, they wouldn't destroy my dad in that would they? I feel like he would deserve an actual official, a real induction, you know? Um, and for a couple years that, you know, would happen. And I was like, Phew. okay, good. We got another year. Maybe next year they'll induct him finally. You know what I mean? And I was kind of anticipating and expecting that call, but the call never came. And the way that I learned about my dad being inducted in the Hall of Fame, I had just finished a workout at LA Fitness. I was in the parking lot in my car. I looked down at my phone because it's blowing up on social media. And I have all these fans congratulating me. Um, you know, congratulations, your dad's finally in. He deserves it. All this, you know, all these comments and, and congratulations. And I just, you'd think I'd be happy. you think, you're right. I was the complete opposite. I knew right then and there what had happened because the WrestleMania was like a couple of days uh, from that point. Uh, and the Hall of Fame was like a couple of days or, or a day before. So I knew no one had called me. No one had informed me. I knew that they were going to just throw him in this wing. And I was like, oh, man. And no disrespect to the other wrestlers that are in that wing, but I just, I, I immediately called this big man, you know, and uh, he didn't pick up. Of course, I didn't expect him to, you know, he was busy with uh, obviously WrestleMania and all the things that were going on. Uh, I text him. I said, just please don't do it right, man. Can you just grant it next year when you're they're in the New York area, you know, uh, the following year, they were like in the, I think it was MetLife stadium or one yeah. of those big stadiums. Cause he was, he was a big hit wherever he went, but I felt that would be more appropriate ge geographically to have him inducted there. And um, he texted me back and said, not a, not, don't take it personal. It's just a company decision. Uh, I was so hurt by that because not only was I not informed, I wasn't invited um, to even come out to the arena just to show my respects for all the other legends. You know, um, it was just a really raw deal, man. And it really put a, a bitter taste in my mouth. Um, and I don't hold on to it, you know, um, I, I've released it and let it go, but it is compartmentalized and is definitely something that if, you know, I can pull from if I ever had ever had to bring some real content to the table, so to speak, you want to, you talk about being full of piss and vinegar, that's something that would light me up very easily. So it is what it is, man, you know, but it just goes to show to me, it was so disrespectful, um, and I was so, it really, it, I was depressed for a couple of weeks. Like it really caused me some despair and grief because I anticipated this for a long time and I thought they would do the right thing. And I don't need Mr. T time where I'm up there for an hour, you know, just give me five minutes. Let me tell two funny stories. You know, I'm taking this uh, acknowledgement and award, uh, you know, for my dad, God bless. Good night. But it never came. So I must be so disregarded or, or, not liked or on some list shit list, I guess that, you know, I wasn't even, uh, I guess, worthy in their minds to even to be able to be, be join that evening to show my respects for that, that ceremony, uh, much less, you know, not even inform me of anything, uh, at all. So it was a raw deal.